This is Breaking Down Security, and I am Brian Brake. Welcome back, listener. After a long hiatus, this is Brian, Mr. Betcher, and Miss Berlin for Breaking Down Security. Hello. Hey. Well, maybe it's not such a long hiatus. I mean, for most people, it's been like a week and a half since we had the Zero Trust thing on. But for us, it's actually been almost about three weeks we've seen each other. Yeah, I know. Because uh, we recorded that one probably a week before we actually I actually left for Sands. So uh, I've gone into a deep depression. Did you? No. Did you miss us? <laughs> a repression? <laughs> wow. Repressed all those memories, huh? All right. Yeah. Well, um, I had a great time in San Diego. It was um, almost perfect weather. It was like uh, yeah. mid-70s, about 23, 24C there. It was uh, very nice. It was only cloudy one day. Uh, a lot of great people I met there at, um, at, at at Sands. I met a couple, actually several people from the Seattle area were down there. There was uh, Scott, who works for an aircraft company up here. Um, uh, Ryan, who works uh, for, for a company down in downtown Seattle. And then there's David, who also works for an airline company. Uh, and then um, a guy named Yasik, who lives in San Diego as well. He works for um, a, a similar threat intelligence company, uh, to very similar to the one I work for. Um uh, and yeah, so we, um, you know, went through and had Mr. Strand was our, our teacher and, um, he's a fantastic instructor. If uh, you ever have a chance to take one of the classes he does, you should definitely do that. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I think we're, I think we're a little off, aren't we? We're, yeah, yeah. Think, the rhythm's a bit so. off. Yeah. Yeah. So. Betcher took uh, Mr. Betcher took 542 with me a long time ago. Uh, Amanda, uh-huh. have you ever taken a SANS course? I have not. Why not? Is that because your company won't pay for it, or uh, you just uh, haven't had any looked, interest? We looked into paying for a couple of them once. Um, right now, we're looking at some other training. Uh, uh-huh. I'll have to look it up, um, but it looks really, really good. It's like threat hunting stuff. Uh-huh. Um, that looks pretty sweet. Yeah. Um, but no, I've just never never had the opportunity to take a sans course yeah i actually got some audio from uh from mr strand and uh frank kim who actually was our first interview ever on on the show uh unfortunately the audio sucked and the acoustics were awful in the hotel so i have it but it sounds like uh uh we were like fifteen thousand miles away over ham radios or something so um i've tried doing cleanup on it but it's it's ultimately unuseful or unusable so um but yeah, I I enjoy I, I enjoyed the class. Um, you know, we had sixty three people in the class. Um, uh, Sans five hundred four, it's not to be underestimated. I actually thought that the first two days were were you know, uh, I thought I could take on the world or something with this, and then the last three <laughs> days just kicked my ass completely, uh, to the point where I was I I, I was holding myself up not a, even a pity party. It was worse than that. I was having like a pity quinceanera. I was. Uh, you know, I had my fancy dress on, and I was I was just feeling like crap, and I didn't want to be around anybody at that point. Um, we got third in the CTF in the 504 class, and we, the team uh, with uh, Yasik and and David and Michael and 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 Ryan and myself uh, did the net worth stuff, and we got second in that. We lost by eight points, which um, I didn't really help on the second night at all. Once we got to level three, it was just awful. So, what part of it? Well, level three. Once you get to, once you get to that point, it's all web application based stuff. So um, apparently, my my seventy one percent. That GWAP came in handy. Yeah, uh, kind of. <laughs> no, there was actually, you know, and I tell people this. I don't come from a place where I've learned, you know, use Metasploit, and that was one of the things you actually had to do. You had to create payloads and and all that stuff. And I'd never done that before. And I think we literally learned that in the class just before uh uh you know we did netwars so a lot of that was still foreign to me and i i didn't know what to expect from netwars anyway so um it's definitely something you want to do if you you know are just you know like doing ctf challenges they actually have continuous netwars online which is like an online ctf that's just constantly going um 
but yeah, I'm, some of the things I asked uh, John Strand about was, you know, what, um, you know, why, 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 why you should use uh, like Sans courses, and um, is, is it is it as useful as as it used to be? You know, because there's so many other options out there. There's you know, e-learning. Uh, you know, uh, cyber, he's got some free stuff, which arguably is, is fairly decent. And, you know, of course you have OFSEC, which has OSC, POSCE and all those. And, um, you know, he was, he was saying that, you know, we're, it's a supply demand thing. The reason they're so expensive is they can't, they don't have enough instructors to teach all the courses they need. Like some people are 24 weeks of the year teaching this stuff in addition to doing their own jobs regularly. So, um, he said the the reason they're so high is they're trying to find a price point basically that you know they can actually start paring down some of the classes and make them almost uh, unattainable in, in in many cases where people will balk on them uh, from what I gathered so um, which you know it, it seems weird that they would do that but uh, you know they got to keep the quality of the classes up and, and the quality of the certifications I guess so um, the training that. I'm actually going to end up taking is from Chris Sanders. Oh, okay. Yeah, he um, um, yeah he came out with a practical packet analysis uh, third edition. I wanted to have him on the show when it came out. Yeah. Obviously, that hasn't so it's, happened yet. It's, it's called a, uh, Investigation Theory: The Mind of an Analyst. Mm -hmm. it yeah, a, it's a lot of threat hunting type stuff. So yeah, I saw that. Uh, um, I made it on his newsletter somehow, and I saw that link. So yeah, that that's class. So. So um, what I would have to say about this is, you know, take this is advice. So take it or leave it. Yeah. Um, you know, do as much of this as you can. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of companies have this uh, training budget, mm -hmm. right? And if you don't ask, if you don't go to HR and says, okay, what's our training budget? You, you may never know that your company does have a training budget. So, so it, helps to go ask secondly you know stands courses are expensive so if you can get your employer to pitch into that go for it mm -hmm. i know um the last sans course i took uh it i had to choose one that was in my area that way i could go you know and not s spend money on the flight yep you know i could um uh hole up and uh, my company just paid for the course, yeah. which was good for them. They didn't have to pay a lot of extra like hotel and flight and things like that. True. So, so try to find one that's close to home. And um, I would say, yeah, take every advantage of that that you can because you're only um, upgrading yourself, right? That's it right. makes yourself more marketable, makes you, uh, <laughs> you know, ultimately it should help you to increase your salary, make you more valuable to your, to the company, make you more employable. Yep. Right. So I'm taking, uh, I'm taking a course at DerbyCon uh, this year. I signed up for um, the, uh, the windows uh, kernel programming course. Cool. I, don't, I actually signed so, up and so, got the red teaming one. So that's, uh, that's cool. Nice. Yeah. Oh man. We didn't, we haven't, we haven't been on since we talked about that. The ticket sold out in three minutes. Oh my gosh, that and, was crazy! And they, you know, they have a history of putting the tickets on for sale early, so they yep. put them on like five minutes early, and they sold out in three minutes before the actual sale time. So people, so people were so oh mad. They were oh mad the God. previous year that they sold out in nine hours, and they were uber mad because of that. So they did say they were going to make some changes where it's actually going to happen on time now. Um, I still don't believe them. Well. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't, yeah. To be honest, I don't think it's hurting them by by making those changes. And if you if you did like we did, and you're following Twitter ahead of time, they're going to be testing you know. the ticket system. So you know that's how I got our three right. tickets um, for for our. You let out our secret. I just they don't ha test anything ever. <laughs> is that what it is? So yeah. It is? So yeah. I mean, I. I set an alert on my phone, so whenever they tweeted that out, I got yep. the alert, and I was like, oh, crap, it's like two minutes before time. Yep. So I went ahead and bought mine at that time. Actually, it was the class, mm -hmm. and they let that one out ahead of time, too. So yeah, they, right? yes, they yeah. definitely have a history of, of opening up sales yep. five, I think their training sometimes was, ten minutes ahead. 
their training what uh sold out in 30 minutes i think yeah and they oh they, they have a wait list now and i think they opened up like another class and stuff so that that's good i i don't know if all that's still available they probably sold out anyway um yeah. their training's after, always been really quality for oh, the price yeah. oh yeah you know after i uh, after i bought mine i refreshed the page and the class that i had just bought and two others had sold out yep so yep. it was minutes. The red teaming class uh, sold out fairly quickly. So I, I'm I'm going to be in there with Josh Schwartz, Fuzzy Knop. Um, hey, hey, Josh. Hey. Hi, Josh. Hey, hey, Josh. I'll be <laughs> on the front row. Yeah. So. Wait, does he listen? I don't know. Maybe maybe he does. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> he may that. be the other download we get every month. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to that. We actually have three tickets we're going to give away, and that actually brings us to another point. Uh, last year we did a CTF and, a, and an auction for a giveaway for um, for for DerbyCon. Um, this year we're probably going to uh, we're going to definitely do another auction, and we're working hard on our CTF. So we do have a Skunk Works on our Slack channel that we've invited some select few people, in addition to the members of the podcast, on to get. See, it's not it's not a CTF in the regular sense, like where you're gonna boot to root a VM or you know whatever. Uh, we 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 had stages last year where we had various clues and such that you had to find the the, the flag for to to be able to do so. So um, we are looking forward to doing that again. We have some people. It's who like are a treasure to... hunt. It oh, is. Just... It's yeah. When you just said that, I I just thought of a really good idea that I have to write down. Please write it down because I can you write it down now? Okay, let's pause. Oh, okay. no, you guys station continue. identification. That's right. Continue to talk. Oh, yeah, she's we're, thinking. Yeah, we're not we're not really recording this right now, so you can she's just connect do whatever. All the dots. Yeah, yeah. What? We're not recording. Wait. Yeah, we're no, just, we're we're not. We're really have to do this another time. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna have to do it again. No. No. <laughs> no um, so. We, we, you know, we, we did a lot last year with it. We used uh, clues in the podcast. So people had to listen to the show. Ha 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 ha. Um, we had, uh, we used Google drive and we used, um, Google searches and, and various clues. So this year we're going to have a little bit more. It's going to be a little bit more complex, but it's not going to be overly difficult. Uh, if you listen to the show, if you, um, listen to the content in the show, <laughs> might have shows we might have shows that are actual clues to some of the yeah. levels that you might have to solve so i'm hoping to have i'm hoping to have some of my now, stuff show up in shodan there, there might there's be one, shows there's one clue oh, God. there might be shows that are clues and there might be clues in the shows exactly right exactly. so yes. keep that in mind yep yep so uh, we're, we're really looking forward to that. I'm really excited about that. Um, depending on how popular DerbyCon gets, it, it may be the last year we do this. I don't know if it gets, <laughs> you know, because I'm a hipster, so I don't like going to things that are like mainstream. And so, you know, once DerbyCon becomes mainstream, we'll have to, you know, move on to something else. So like Sector, Infiltrate or something like that. So, um, yeah, so uh, that's uh, that's going to be coming up soon. Uh, we have until September like 20th. So the, the, the right. CTF will start in like July or so. We'll, we'll definitely mention it on the show and we'll tweet it out. Yeah. Um, Besides Helena, the new Derby con. <laughs> <laughs> Helena, Montana. Okay. All right. In January. Oh, goodness. January in Montana. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so um, while I was in class, it was what? Literally Thursday morning. Yeah, Thursday morning I had, I, you know, I was pretty much in a media blackout. But um, Mr. Strand comes in, and he's like, "Hey, did you hear about the WannaCry stuff?" And I'm like, "Uh, oh, not heard about it." Um, <laughs> so apparently, WannaCry is like the new MSO eight oh six seven, where SMB um, and actually there's there's been updates. There's actually Samba. Samba now has the same uh, very similar vulnerabilities out. Uh, that just came out recently, but uh, SMB shares who, that are exposed to the internet basically have a, you know, uh, you have a new way to get into those. Um, so we've gone almost, what, seven years now, or almost not almost 10 years before we actually got another um, major RCE um, in, in SMB. So my question to, to the esteemed group of the Mrs. Uh, Miss Berlin and Mr. Betcher is, why is SMB sitting on the internet exposed like that? What is the use case that that a company would would have that sitting out there? Um, well, 1994 called. <laughs> really? Right? Yeah, so, so yeah, it makes like it a... easier, right? You just 
Uh, make, uh, makes a lot easier though. That that's my problem. What are you transferring files or something using SMB? It's like, oh yeah, we, right you know. I mean, <laughs> probably even email at this point would be more secure option uh, than than having an SMB share open to the internet. Okay, well that wasn't the only thing, but it was a way in. True. Um, okay, so the main thing was once once the attackers got you know, cross the threshold of the organization, right? Mm -hmm. Once they got past the firewalls, then a lot of companies were wide open. Sure. Right. For SMB once yeah. they got in. So oh, right. oh, yeah. a lot of this had to do with social engineering where they would pop one box and then it spread within the company, not okay. necessarily from the outside, but I did hear there were thousands of boxes popped from the, from the internet. So yeah. that's a, There's yeah, there's over, I think the Shodan search showed over 400,000. Okay, so now it, now that is a larger, much larger number than it was when we looked at it during class. I mean, we did okay. a Shodan search for that, and it was only about ten to 15,000. So with there being 400,000 people, 400,000 hosts on with SMB exposed, do you think the majority of those are now honeypots? 300,000 honeypots? I'm, I'm just asking. You said because th th that number is way larger than what I remember. Now, where'd seeing you get three hundred thousand? No one. Uh, it says all right. So the Hacker News article mm -hmm. showed three hundred thousand port port four forty five. Yeah, this is well, this is the Samba one that just came out a couple days ago. So, um, oh. yeah, um, this is this is the Samba Cry, not uh, Wanna yeah, Cry. Yeah, that's sorry. Um, no, that's okay. It's cool. Yeah, I, I see the I see the link here, the exter eternal blue. And actually, from what I understood, uh, Samba Cry used more uh, of the uh, uh, the NSA drop uh, vulnerabilities mm -hmm. than WannaCry did. WannaCry used like two. This one used like seven, um, which I, I found interesting. But because you, you you were and and then actually want, uh, Samba Cry actually has a, a Metasploit module which you can download in that in that uh, article. So it's a Pretty much about your worst nightmare. But yeah, I think, Mr. Betcher, you're right that this is uh, just a, it, it's not an exposed to the internet thing because most companies that are smart don't expose SMB and Samba to the internet. It's yep. it's used as a pivot once once people get in, you know, because most people create a hardened shell on the outside and inside their, whatever allegory you want to use, they're either an egg or a, 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 can, a, a <laughs> cantaloupe or a, you know, coconut or something where it's, you know, a nice gushy middle um yeah so and you so need 445 for uh, active directory kind of uh, issues so it's yeah. interesting it hit china really hard why do you think that is um you know maybe there's a lot of um now i'm not saying this is just china but maybe there's a lot of windows uh systems that are pirated mm. right yeah. So if you, a uh, friend of mine told me this, I don't know where this is coming from, but if you do have a pirated Windows, um, uh, you know, operating system, you won't be able to update it. And it's possible that they had pirated versions that just weren't updatable. Yeah. And hence they didn't get the March patch. Yeah. I think, th I think the reason that, that WannaCry got such a, a big deal was they, they said that uh, England's, uh, UK's National Health Service, was, their, their systems were disrupted, which, you know, being healthcare industry, the vertical, isn't really known for security in the first place. So um, I'm not really surprised that they got popped from a, from a healthcare perspective because it seems like a lot of industries that have our most secure information are also the, mo or the most secret information is also the most insecure. Uh, utilities, you know, healthcare, banking. Well, banking's a little better, but um, you know, we see these we see these companies that have all this secret information and and you know our most trusted information, and yet they're the most insecure of systems and, and, and intelligence industry. agencies. <laughs> and, 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 <laughs> yes, that is a, that is a true statement, sir. Um, yes, um, what I. So um, we found out, I, I had actually found out about the kill switch, which I found interesting. The initial version of WannaCry had the kill switch, which I loved, but um, um, I'd love to have that guy on because uh, he, he yeah. found it and bought the domain, which was cool because right. it was a detection thing like, uh, like we've talked about before with, uh, with malware. If it notices like you have one processor 
it won't run because it thinks it's running in a VM. Well, this one had a kill switch where it looked for a specific URL, and if the URL existed, then it would shut off because it would be assuming that it was, you know, um, you know, being being tested for. So um, yeah, that, that was that was kind of interesting. And he bought and he that did it on accident. He did it on accident. He didn't know about the kill switch. I don't think when he registered the domain, it's just part of the process that he was doing. Oh, that's what yeah, I Yeah, he's like, is this domain registered? Um, oh, what is this? Let's see. Right. Okay, I didn't know. I didn't know that part. I just thought he bought so, it because yeah, he knew about it. I mean, it. he had the thought. Well, I'll go ahead and register it. We'll see what happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. very cool. Yeah, I heard there. I heard there was like crap going on with him and um, journalists or something too. Like yeah, he ever- tries to maintain his anonymity, and after he broke this, some idiot journalist made it their mission to dox this guy and, oh, and okay. basically put his real information out there on the internet. So, um, never seen anything like that either. I was like, wow, that's you know, you don't see that often where journalists just want to you know put someone out there and make him a target. So, yeah, because so that's I have kind a of thought. Uh, counterintuitive like who who's gonna ever come to you with a news scoop yeah yeah <laughs> what was your thought exactly. Mr. Patrick? so yeah apparently the shadow brokers were selling this thing and i got on um i2p and i read their little article and it said basically we're we want to sell the highest we want to sell this to the highest bidder so we'll accept bids you have to pay us in advance and we're not going to tell anybody if what the highest bid is. So just pay us as much as you think it's worth. Yeah. And we'll what? just take all your money and give these things away to whoever gives us more money. I did not hear about that at all. <laughs> well, that's awesome. yeah, it was, it was a, it was a, uh, a website or whatever that you went to or a blog article or some, or a blog, something like that on, I saw it on I2P, but I heard it was on, you know, some onion sites as well. They couldn't give it away. Yeah. They, they, uh, they were looking so, for like a thousand Bitcoin and they couldn't give it away. Yeah. So then all of a sudden, um, you didn't know this, but Microsoft patched it yep. in March. Yep. And then shadow brokers dumps it all on the internet right, right after that. But okay. You're like, okay, why did they dump this? Because you didn't know that Microsoft had patched it. The shadow brokers just dumped it for whatever reason, no reason at all. I, yeah. It was unexplainable. And then a month later, this exploit gets public, and oh, Microsoft is like, oh, we already, we already uh, patched it back yeah. then. You guys just didn't know. So my theory is, well, what if Microsoft was actually the highest bidder mm. on that? Because, you know, oh. hundred, you know. Ten million dollars. What's what's it to them, right? They're a ginormous company. This might be worth it for reputation's sake True. to patch these things. So, what if they were the highest bidder and shadow brokers just assumed that, man, this is worth a lot of money. These guys are going to keep it secret for as long as possible. Yeah. And then Microsoft patches it, and then they get pissed off and they just dump it to the internet, hoping that, you know, they that someone can use it because obviously they didn't. Yeah. Or they couldn't use yeah. it because everything's patched now. Yeah. Well, there, some of the right. some of the things that were that were patched, including the um, uh, rare XP <laughs> patch, uh, apparently. And I was I was following uh, Patrick Gray from Risky Business. He said the timestamp on that one was like February something. So they've known about some of these vulnerabilities. At, or Microsoft at least has known about some of these vulnerabilities since at least February, um, and they didn't actually dump this stuff till May. So. Um, yeah, I, I I would be interested uh, to find out if Microsoft was the highest bidder. That would it, that would make sense. I mean, with the narrative uh, to what have you, um, that you know they got a peek at some of the contents, but they didn't get all of it. Yeah, that would be well worth the expense to them. Sure. Yeah. To take that probably risk. a drop in the bucket too. It would have been a drop in the bucket for. Yeah, for a large company like that, and and some yeah. hacker groups not going to be able to afford what Microsoft could afford. So I'm know. sure there was some wheeling and dealing going on, and the shadow brokers had no idea that they were dealing with Microsoft. I understand shadow brokers now has like a subscription service, um, so you really? can sign up and and get information like hmm. piecemeal. So they're going into like the uh, what malware is a service? No, 
malware alerts as a service because they're the ones giving out the malware. So you get alerted when new stuff gets dropped. And, uh, you know, obviously yeah. they're now legit because they've been dropping stuff that has definitely been, been used. I mean, that well's going to dry up eventually, but, um, yeah, they, they, they have it out there. I think you can go and, uh, and buy that. Of course, do you want to give your credit card number to some, you know, nefarious people? I mean, get a gift card, I guess, if you're going to do that, just in case. But, um, yeah. Uh, so maybe we can bring this up on a future cast after we do a little research. But I was, I was thinking, like, okay, these Bitcoin accounts, you know, people are monitoring these, these accounts for this uh, WannaCry stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh, they got all this money. And, and um, so how do they get that money out of bitcoin if it's being monitored let's say you know 20 governments in the world are monitoring this bitcoin account and whoever takes a dollar out of there they're gonna find them yeah right is 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 that how it works because how are they ever going to get that money well the way i understood it was that and actually we have a we have this in our list of things to talk about uh is like blockchain and how that works and you know okay. how 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 Bitcoin anonymizes things, and then there's things like Ethereum, which apparently, if you uh, owned a thousand Bitcoin back in 2010, it's worth like 35 million dollars now. So, um, right. you know, if it's like baseball cards, if, if you kept them long enough, they're actually worth something now. But um, yeah, there's a. I, I'm sure that those can be watched. Uh, for for value to go down if they're in a, if they're in an exchange or something like that where you can you know trade and and, and use them as a commodity um, there's you know the, the way they use it is they money launder so they convert you know illegal money to Bitcoin and then the money becomes untraceable because it's you know Bitcoin now um, so I mean I, I would imagine that you could you know, take it out at your leisure. I mean, that, that'll sit in there forever, just gaining, you know, value depending on, you know, up or down on the market. And, uh, there's ways of taking, how do you launder, how do you launder Bitcoin though? Well, you take, you take the Bitcoin and you put, you take it to a service that will like randomize the hash and, uh, Please, if Are you I'm sure, if I'm wrong, please somebody pipe up and tell yeah, me that let's... I'm absolutely wrong. But from what I understand, that bitcoins have a hash or have a piece that can be randomized again and again. And what you do is you take and you upload your your bitcoin to these services. Okay, we need will... to get Satoshi Nakamura on the podcast, so you work on that. If you can do that, I <laughs> we will be like upper echelon type shiz night on the, on the podcast, people. I mean, if you can break that story, sir, I. You know, but yeah, we'll uh, we'll definitely do more on Bitcoin in the in the future because you know it's it's never not been hot and it, you know there are some security things about it and there's hashing and all kinds of fun algorithms and stuff involved and you know how to mine it and you know owning so much of the blockchain makes it so that you can control it which you know there's influence peddling there that can be done so there's there's a lot of interesting uh security issues going on with that and then of course the rise of ethereum and all the other cryptocurrencies so yeah uh, the only way i thought you could do that is uh i've i've heard of people that have owned bitcoin wallets uh, in like uh mongodb instances mm. yeah I, I just print out my uh, Bitcoin onto p- like 20 pieces of paper. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I'm old school. So yeah. I just have to fat right. finger them in when I want to buy something. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> check out. Like it takes about 40 minutes to check out because I have to write, I have to, you know, type the hash out. So right. You write, get your checkbook. Yeah. 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 I guess if I did speech to text, it'd be a lot easier. But <clears throat> yeah. So, um, what else? What else is there to talk about? What did you guys think about the XP patch? Because everybody was all up in arms about that. That was interesting. Oh, that they actually sent out another patch? Yeah, yeah. They may have done it because, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that have XP on it, like pause devices, Mm -hmm. uh, medical devices, things that probably can't be patched or upgraded. As I say, things that probably aren't getting patches already. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, things okay. that can't, you know, can you put <laughs> Windows 10 on a on a pause device? I don't know, right? Well, they or do have the device. pause version of Windows 10, but um, yeah, I mean, you can still get Windows XP updates for the pause ready devices uh, until 2019. I may or may not have a Windows XP VM that is still getting updates. So, yeah, 
I may have not, may or may not have made the registry change for that. Um, but so, okay, so that, that was a good interesting point that Amanda said. They issued a patch for XP, but most of the devices that are getting XP up to this point have not gotten any patches. So does the patch that they issued only fix the necessary stuff to fix WannaCry, or does it also fix all the other SMB vulnerabilities up to this point? Have they even been making patches for XP for those, though? Yes. I mean, if you if you have a pause terminal or oh, you right. paid a Brazilian right. dollars like the U.S. Navy did, right. you have extended support for XP. So it's That's still available, idea. but they issued this one to, like, the gen pop, general population. Right. Everybody right. has access to it. Um, so I... I want to know. I don't have an XP box. Well, I do. Um, I haven't. I haven't applied the patch yet because I was afraid of it actually bricking something because I wasn't using the actual version. But um, so you bring up a good point, though, Amanda. You said the things that are running XP probably weren't getting patches in the first place. Um, medical devices, pause terminals, they don't regularly get updates. So companies right. and hospitals and financial institutions and Joe's, you know, bait shop should have already had additional controls in place to either isolate this machine to keep it from reaching out to the internet or having access from the internet to it. Um, so what was gained by having a patch for something that you should have, by you know common sense, should have been isolated on the network in the first place? Probably... Um... What am I trying to say here? It it um, it makes Microsoft look like the good guy. They're trying to help everybody by doing something free. It's like charity. Mm. Well, you know, it was it was really a damned if you do, damned if you don't kind of thing. Because there were people like, well, that just means that people won't upgrade now, and they're still on a dead OS. Uh, and then there are other people like you that said, oh yeah, they look like a good guy because they still care about their XP people. Um, there's I mean, really... it's still it's a gigantic vulnerability, you know, but it would be pretty shitty not yeah. to patch it. I I think they had an internal talk and they said, you know, guys, do we patch this or not? Okay, so what if we don't? Yeah. You know, all these XP boxes, whether I mean, there's probably a lot of them out there that they have no choice but to run XP. Yeah. So you know, probably for publicity you know good publicity they went ahead and did it yeah so um i i was again listening i think it was probably last week's episode of risky business but um patrick does a really good job of reporting so um if you're if if you're done listening to this show download risky business and listen to his i don't i, I won't i won't hate you if you do that i still listen to his show because it's a great source of information he said that WannaCry affected mostly windows 7 boxes because if you attempted to run ms1710 against uh an xp box it would cause denial of service and windows 7 was the what was the earliest of the older operating systems that would actually be affected by this in, in a positive manner and then i saw later versions where um it was affecting up to like I want to say 2008 servers, and then somebody came out with a patch that actually fixed it so that WannaCry worked for tw Windows 10 and 2012 server. So, I mean, if you're running Windows 7, you definitely want to patch because you're still getting, well, you were getting patches up until like last month. You're not getting patches anymore, right? It's into life? No, that was Windows Vista. Windows 7? Vista. Vista was the one. Okay, so. Vista. No, um, no, I thought Windows 7 is getting, uh, no, there was a Windows 10 version that went into life. It was like the first, the first rev of Windows 10 that came out. Wow, it was like okay. 10.59 or something. It was like, yeah, it was the one that still had the old patching type. Okay, so I mean, yeah, if you uh, if you can get any kind of patches for Windows 7, please do so. But uh, yeah, I, it's actually I, half, of, almost half of the market share is Windows 7 right now. Well, yeah, because you still got Grandma and, and your mom and and everybody. I'm still... surprised Windows XP went down so much. It's well, at seven. It's at seven percent. Really? Yeah, that's surprising. Well, to be fair, it what that Damn. it's almost twenty-two years old. No, but like uh, based on a year ago when it was, gosh, like thirty percent, I think. Well, isn't that part of the planned obsolescence? Like they gave Microsoft gave people the option to upgrade to Windows Ten for free. 
Um, people, some people took advantage of it, but then you've got people whose boxes, if they're running XP, are getting on about ten to fifteen years old. So they some should of those, just be dying. They would be dying. Yes, or right. hard drive corruption, or it's going to take significant. Yeah, Windows <laughs> Seven was significant work to actually get XP on a new box, or, yeah. or that same. Yeah, you know, think of you know uh, outdated software that they have to use or whatever. Mm-hmm. You're gonna have to clone the box and make sure everything works on a new one. And... Yeah, I still have a gateway recovery CD. I think for my for my gateway 350 megahertz oh box or whatever. But yeah, I so I mean, if you if you got XP, um, you know, even if you were affected, you, it would have just denial of service or, or you know hosed up your box. So you would have known fairly quickly when you couldn't turn on your MRI scanner or you couldn't you know swipe cards at the at the at the terminal so um yeah i just could have been much worse yeah that's from every everything i've read said it could have been far far worse and that um you know people just happened to be catching on quickly enough that they were able to stop it from happening because there was other things that they could have done um you know to to weaponize it or to make it uh, a, a lot more uh, a lot more painful for people so uh yeah so uh, so yeah, if you have any other thoughts or questions as a listener, and you know you think we're full of crap, or you know I don't understand what Bitcoin is, please feel free to to hit me up on our Slack channel or uh, you know email us. So I yeah, will do that. Please do that, sir. Yes, actually, don't we know somebody who knows something about malware who wanted to come and you know maybe talk about that? I don't I don't remember. You mean ransomware? Yeah, ransomware. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, I heard. Yeah. I heard. I heard some things. Well, maybe maybe yeah. he'll come on and maybe he'll come on and talk about that with us. So, maybe Mr. Goff. So, all right. Well, um, I want it to be a short night because this is uh, we recorded this the night before a holiday weekend, so everybody wants to get out and enjoy time with their friends. So, we have one more announcement. I just want to go to bed. And, and uh, Amanda, Amanda has this thing called sleep that she likes to do. I don't, I don't know what the hell that means. For us East Coasters. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it is what. What it's eleven. Like, it's well, not. you drink enough beer, eventually you're gonna fall asleep. That's right. That's right. I have I I have this thing where if I have one, I fall asleep. But <laughs> if I keep drinking, I'm fine. Oh, uh, okay. well, yeah. If you keep if you keep movement, you know, you can't. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, we have a training announcement. So we just finished our Python Yay. course that went about six weeks long, which was great. Um, uh, Mr. Matt, uh, you know, we had a great time. We had about a half dozen to a dozen people at any one time in every class learning about uh, uh, Python and how to use it. Uh, we hope to uh, do some more with Matt in the future with regards to Python. He's got some stuff he'd like to discuss uh, with us for the future. But um, we, we, we're here to officially announce our next training uh, class. Um, we, one, of our, one of our slackers uh, on our Slack channel uh, approached me and she said, hey, I've got this uh, web application security class that I'd like to give out. And what are you typing? Just, just, just keep talking. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so, so Miss Sunny, <laughs> Miss Sunny reached out on uh, Slack and said, "Hey, you know, I've got this class I'd like to give." Um, she emailed me a copy of the slides, and she, you know, she's got you know, 85 slides already. Uh, so, what we're going to do is starting on June 14th, she's going to do a web application security class uh, concerning Burp, uh, Burp Suite, which is uh, the interception proxy, and also. Pretty much uh, the only tool that Mr. Strain used in class. He used a little bit of Zap, but uh, the majority of the time when he was talking about the web application stuff, he was using Burp to uh, intercept. Uh, and we did that. We used that for the exercises. So um, <clears throat> we're going to start that on June 14th. Now we're doing it a little differently than we did our Python class. And for those of you who attended the Python class, you'll say, hey, that's way different. Um, when you sign up for the class, what you'll do is we're going to charge for this class because we uh, found that uh, people tend to put more value in something that they pay for. So if you are interested in the class, uh, you need to go to our Patreon, which is in the show notes, or you can go to patreon.com forward slash uh, breaking down BDS security. Let me see. Dang it. All right. Let me get to exit editor i never use okay so it's patreon.com forward slash bds underscore podcast and uh you'll see various uh you know patron levels on there so 
if you want to join the class and sign up and you want to learn about burp and it's a really great class i actually showed um i they show i showed the slides to miss miss berlin mr betcher here before and they were they were suitably impressed Um, wonderful they were wonderful well there you go um so we have two levels one called the class attendee level it's a 20 dollar class so for it looks like about three to four weeks um i haven't gotten an email back from her about how long it's going to be but it looks like it's going to be about a three to four week class um so for 20 bucks basically you'll you'll go and you'll attend a class over zoom like what we're doing the podcast on right now um I'm not looking at whatever it is you typed, Mr. Betcher, okay? I, I'm, I'm looking at about five other tabs, and you're screwing the pooch here, buddy. <laughs> We're also looking for new co-hosts, so uh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, so, you yeah, have to be named Brian, though. Just it has so. to be named Brian, yeah, that's the yeah. only problem. So tw- if you're going to attend the class on the Zoom, pay 20 bucks, and you're in the class. So there's a maximum of 50 people, so that's the maximum size of the, of the Zoom. If... Let's say because you live in a time zone that isn't conducive to allowing for this, uh, and you still want to attend the class or you know get involved in the in the Slack channel for chat, um, we're going to be recording it as well, so you can go in uh, and 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 at the nine dollar level, you can get the the videos immediately right after the class ends, um, and we'll send you a link in Patreon for uh, the access to the the videos, so you'll be able to watch those and follow along. Um, if you don't want to do any of that, you can just wait until the class is done and then we'll just post all the videos for free, um, at, at, at some point in the near future after the class is over. Um, so, uh, yeah, if you're interested in doing web app, you know, learning more about web application security, if you're needing some CPEs for your CISA or CISSP, or you're just interested in, in learning how to use burp or anything before that, uh, yeah, sign up for the class. It's uh, the link will be in the show notes. Uh, just go into the Patreon and uh, and and sign up. So um, we're really looking forward to to having you on. Uh, and and we actually thanking thank Miss Sunny for uh, for taking the time to do that. So you're right, Brian. <laughs> you're killing me. Okay. <laughs> right. All right. So let's 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 be done with this. Somebody being a horse is no, not a jackass. Somebody's being a jackass, literally and figuratively. Um, so, Miss Amanda, if if people wanted to, to get a hold of you, wait, I have one more thing. Oh, I'm sorry, you did hold up your it. finger earlier. Yes. Yeah, I I, I had a, I had a real thing. Okay, what's up? Um, so I, yeah, uh, admittedly, even though I haven't actually put any work into this yet because my schedule's been crazy, but I am part of a group. Uh, that's doing a DEFCON contest. Really? Uh, this year, it's called, uh, if anybody's ever done Who Slide Is It Anyways? Oh, like improv um, slide stuff. Like yeah, improv, okay. Yeah, it's, it's an official DEFCON contest this year. Wow. All right. Yeah. So there's so, going to be judges and stuff? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Uh, so in the show notes, I put a link to, um, uh, if you're going to DEFCON and if you want to do it, the sign up link. And it's at Improv Hacker. On Twitter, I can't see it. It's uh, below a picture of Mr. Betcher. Right? <laughs> it's on the second page. There it is. Okay. Um, and yeah, it should be pretty cool. Well, some of the slides that I see the guys putting together already are are pretty amazing. So I can't wait to put some of mine in there. Okay. Are they actual slides or? Oh yeah, yeah. We uh, so the first. So time taken I from did real it, talks. Uh. No, oh, <laughs> I think okay, some of so, them, I think some of them are. So but, basically, you um, have to present, and they ju- they show the slides, right? Yeah, I've heard of this. You get yeah, you get you get just like five minutes to present on a randomized slideshow. Like okay. you get cool, cool. Um, you know, I pick slideshow number twelve, and then that's the one that you get, and that's the one you have to present on. Is this something I'm going to be able to bring my eleven year old daughter to? Uh probably not. Okay, so it is adult humor and adult related yeah. so keep yeah. that in mind if you go to defcon don't go hey let's go to the cool whose slide is it anyway and then you know you're gonna see okay. mm, i don't know if they'll go that far i would i'm not sure i need to talk to them about and see how okay what, what the rules are yeah but uh yeah the one uh that i actually helped do uh at, i think it was at the first circle city con um, I got to help throw in some of the slide decks and one that I actually ended up with was uh, a slide I had found online about artificial insemination. 
and it was oh, hysterical. Okay. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Like with bulls and stuff. Like uh, the real, okay, all right. The real we're, deal. We're good. Yeah. Okay. I get it. <laughs> so that's the idea. Oh, so like explicit it's not, this week. not all tech related. So explicit this week. <laughs> okay. Hey. Jeez. It's a real thing. It's cool. It's, it's an cool. educational podcast. No, I get it. Not that educational. <laughs> Not that educational. All right. So, all right. So, yeah, check that out at DEF CON. Miss Amanda's uh, got a link in the show notes and got a um, got an at improv hacker on Twitter uh, handle yeah. for that. Uh, is that for volunteers to, like, help make slides and stuff? Is that what you're wanting? No, that's just for announcements and, and setting up and stuff. Okay, cool. All yeah. right. So outside of that, how would people get a hold of you if they would if they would like to? Uh, at info sister i n f o s y s t i r on twitter or slack excellent excellent mr hey betcher <laughs> over there how would uh, people get a hold of you if they wish to get a hold of you i'm on twitter uh at betcher pwned okay or uh imf security right. logmd.com you just got your own little mini empire there don't you trying All yeah right. So um, I'm on Twitter, uh, mostly, uh, at BreakSec uh, is our official podcast uh, Twitter. At Brian Break is our, um, is our, uh, is mine, actually, at B-R-Y-A-N-B-R-A-K-E. <laughs> um, I also do the local CitySec uh, meetup, uh, CSEC East. I don't mention it a lot on the show, and I probably should. But if you're in the Seattle area or in Redmond or Bellevue, and uh, you'd like to have a monthly meetup with a bunch of like-minded individuals... Uh, you can follow CSEC East at C S E A SEC S E C East. There is a CSEC, but I don't think they have a Twitter, uh, and they don't really do anything. I actually know the guy who does that. He actually comes to ours. So, um, <laughs> yeah, um, it's in it's normally in the area of Redmond and Bellevue, and uh, we go as far south as um, Mercer Island. Sometimes, if you're uh, if you're in Seattle, you know what that is. So. Um, yeah, so we have a Slack channel. Slack channel is going crazy. 380 people so far in the general yeah. chat, and it's Doing very great. active. Very active uh, group of people. Uh, we just started up an automation channel for discussion of automating scripts or um, making sure, you know, if you're wanting to understand how to automate stuff with Python or Perl or which is perfect because that's what i've been working on with, with apis or, or what have you we have a whole channel dedicated to that we also have a job board which is going gangbusters There's a lot of jobs in there um some from starbucks some from amazon uh, we disney got a, disney was in there we have some uh, yeah i can mention disney it's cool um yeah and you know in addition to that we have uh, malware boards so we have people like tyler hudak who comes in and and we ask questions about malware and reverse engineering we have a pen testing channel. We also still have our Python channel. So if you're interested in just discussing things about Python, that's cool too. So yeah, we talk about a lot of stuff. There's a lot of great people in there. And of course we have our CTF club and book club, which we need to get back on schedule with the book club and the CTF thing. Uh, we're doing a European the book version. Good. Say book what? Club we changed, book club we just changed the day and the time. Okay, when is that? Because of summer. Now it's Mondays? Monday at 10 p.m. Eastern. Okay. Um, and then we have a CTF club, uh, still doing the toss. We're on level 19 for that. Uh, so we've got a lot of going on. I mean, uh, we've got the city seg meetup, we've got the podcast, we've got Slack is very active on Slack. So if you're looking for some networking opportunities, please uh, join us in there. So, all right. So if the stars align and I'm going to call it right now, we're supposed to have miss Jesse Soros Rex on Twitter. Oh, join us on Tuesday. Do that. Shut up, dude. I'm going to make this happen. She said it was cool. We're going to make this happen. Okay. Knock on wood. Knock, knock wood, man. So uh, she's going to come on and, and talk about uh, um, whatever it is she would like to talk about because she's a pretty cool lady. And uh, she did a, um, a keynote in South Africa just recently, so we're going we're to talk yeah. to her about that and some other stuff. So, um, yeah, catch that uh, late next week. So, all right. It's glad to be back. I'm, I'm glad to be back in the seat here. I, I realize that uh, I, I need to learn a lot more having been humbled by Sec 504, and I want my listeners to be smarter than me, to exceed me. You know, most most fathers want their children to exceed them and be smarter than them and be more successful. So that's uh, that's our mission in life is to make everybody just a little bit smarter than us. So um, that's it for breaking down security. This What's that? Too late. They already are. <sighs>
God. Ugh. Just one last <laughs> kick to the teeth, man. All right, that's it. That's it. We're done. <laughs> Bye, down. everybody. Bye, everybody. We're going. Bring down security. Have a great week. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs>